Hello and welcome to the answer series Grade 12 Maths Literacy video on Loans Part 1. The aim of Loans Part 1 is to understand the concept and terminology of a loan, to determine the real cost of the loan, and to interpret and analyse graphs of loans. Loans. This is when a lender gives money to the borrower with the agreement that the loan will be paid back at a later date. The length of time in which the loan must be paid back is called the term of the loan. The loan is repaid in monthly repayments, which is made up of a portion of the original loan amount plus a portion of the interest accrued. The interest is calculated on a fixed or variable interest rate, which can either be calculated as simple or compound interest. Loan agreements can either be formal, as in between a bank and micro lender, or informal between family members. Loans can be taken out for the full value of the goods or services, or for a partial amount, as is the case in higher purchase agreements. Loans are typically taken to cover things like personal expenses, student loans, cars, home appliances, house loans, which we also known as mortgages, furniture, etc. Loans require an understanding of interest, so should you want a refresher, you can turn to your Grade 12 Maths Literacy 3-in-1 book and you will find interest on page 89. Let's talk about the real cost of a loan. So the real cost of the loan is the borrowed amount plus the interest that is charged. I'd like you to put a big star around this formula because you'll be using it often. The total amount paid back is equal to the monthly repayment times by the number of months of a loan. Now, there are different ways in which we can reduce the cost of a loan. We can either increase the value of your monthly repayments or we can deposit extra money into the loan account. Both of these scenarios decrease the amount of money on which interest is calculated. In this way, your loan can be paid off faster and with less interest being paid. Let's look at some worked examples. So Kate's home loan agreement is shown. The loan account is for 725,000, length of the loan, 20 years, interest rate, 14.5% per year, with a monthly repayment of 9,280,000. The question says, calculate the total amount that Kate needs to pay. Now, there's our fancy formula again. The total amount paid back is equal to our monthly repayment times by the number of months of the loan. So let's calculate her repayment, 9280, times by 20 years. But wait, the question, the formula requires months. So we need to convert 20 years to months, so we times by 12, and that gives me a total of 2,227,200 rand. Next question. We now need to calculate the total amount of interest that Kate would pay. Since we know that interest is the total amount paid back minus the original loan value, we can calculate. We have just calculated the total amount minus the original value of the loan which is given and that leaves us with the interest value that she owes. And look at that, over one and a half million rand paid purely in interest. So it's expensive. Let's go through worked examples. Discuss graph A which they tell us is the real cost of Kate's home loan. If we have a look at our graph They've given us months, 240 months is 20 years, so that indicates that it's a home loan, which they've told us, and the amount paid back at the end. So if we look at graph A, it is a straight line graph, that's right. Why? Because her monthly repayments are the same every month, so she's increasing at a constant rate. So if we have to describe graph A, We can say it is a straight line graph and 
it is due to the monthly repayments of the same value. Question 2.2. Discuss graph B, the total amount owing on the loan. Let's have a look at graph B. So it starts at the value of the home loan and it decreases throughout the length of the loan. Why? Let's think about it. Again, what's happening is throughout the home loan, the amount of interest that is being charged decreases due to the decreasing outstanding value. So we can summarize. Graph B decreases at an increasing rate. The reason for this is due to a decreasing interest being accrued. Therefore, the total amount owing decreases. Last one, graph C. Determine or discuss the total amount of interest that is being paid. So if we go to graph C, there it is, straight line, and then something happens, maybe around 190 months, something happens, my graph starts curving. Why is this? Again, in the beginning part of the home loan, your interest is high because the outstanding balance is high. But towards the end, the total value owing is smaller. Therefore, the interest accrued is smaller. Let's summarize. Graph C is an increasing curved graph. We can say plus minus at 190 months. The rate of the interest accrued decreases due to the outstanding amount decreasing. Now that we've worked through these examples, it's time to test your understanding. You need to consolidate by practicing, write down the key facts at the start of a question, check your answer makes sense and that you've answered the question. So turn to page 104 and let's do it. Complete question three and question 5.1 when you've done that, check your answers on page A16 and A17. Thank you for joining us for this Grade 12 Math Literacy video. We here at the Answer Series look forward to guiding you through the rest of Loans Part 2 in our next video. So, see you soon! If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from The Answer Series, your key to exam success.